Hey family, it's Marv, onerepatatime.net. Wait a second, no, that is not true. Don't have the website, so let's try that again. Hey family, it's Marv, one rep at a time. Man, it's been a minute since I've said that intro. Uh, actually gonna be filming new footage for the first time in a long time in one rep lair. So today we're gonna do a complete resistance band guide, as well as a review of a set of bands that were sent to me to try out. So everything you know about resistance bands is heading your way. Stay tuned. Okay, family, we're back. Uh, first things first, finally got my hair cut. Now that salons are open in San Diego, so my little protest ended. Um, so quick shout out to at Bloom Heidi. If you're in San Diego and need a haircut, absolutely check her out. She does fantastic work. Uh, you better believe on the way up to LA for the big men's health photo shoot a couple years ago. I stopped at her salon on the way up there. So reach out to her if you need a haircut and you're in San Diego. Now let's get to the point of the day, resistance bands um, and a review of the set of resistance bands that was set to me. So I, for the more recent years, have switched to these looped bands as previous companies, bands that are set like this, which we'll go over, were breaking on me after about six to nine months. Got really sick of that. A couple times they snapped on my back and actually cut me open. So I transitioned to these more loop bands, which now I personally use resistance bands primarily to you know, increase progressive resistance in the gym, which we will absolutely cover today. But these are like an all-in-one set of resistance band by Good Holo on Amazon. So information is down below um, and it'll be going across the screen right now. So let's dive into what all comes in that set. So this is your traditional resistance band set, like your at home starter kit. Uh, what I've never seen before, and what I really like is it's five bands and they're all 30 pounds. So you just add more bands to increase the resistance. I haven't seen that personally yet. Maybe that's a thing, but I have not been aware of that. Love that design idea because the problem with bands is Unless you buy a starter kit like this one, buying individual bands like the rubber band that I showed earlier can get really pricey really quickly. Plus then you have to figure out, do you want to buy extra attachments like you know, a door holder, which you can make with a sock, but a door holder, handles, uh, ankle straps, stuff like that. So like the all-in-one set is a fantastic starting place. So long as you get one that's pretty heavy duty and is not gonna break. I've been using these throughout the week and they have not broken. So it comes with five different, like I said, obviously with some handles, it has a door stopper, an ankle strap, two handles, and then it has this guy right here. Honestly, and this is, I don't get any money from referring this company or anything, unless you uh, have somewhere to anchor this to work on your external rotation. I don't really see much use for this, but for a starter kit to have only one item that's not like, oh my goodness, that's fantastic, is great, and for the money, um, you could do a lot worse. So how do resistance bands work? Seems like a silly question, but you need to understand it to be able to use them to the best of your ability. So obviously no tension here. As I stretch it, tension increases. This is totally different from other exercises or other, I mean, I should say equipment. So say you have a cable machine, it is continuous tension meaning you know, your muscles are, are stressed through the same way the entire time, the resistance profile isn't changing. With the weight, the resistance profile is based purely on gravity. So depending on where you know, the fulcrum is, your lever arms are, is gonna change how much resistance your muscles actually have to overcome. So what resistance bands do is the resistance increases as it stretches, which is gonna mean as you're in the muscle shortened position, resistance is the highest, and it's been suggested that if you have a weak body part, that's just you have a hard time developing and a hard time feeling, it's really weak in that shortened position. And that's where resistance bands come in super handy is adding them to existing exercises if you choose the right ones to complement the resistance profile of that exercise. You can obviously use bands for standalone workouts, which we're gonna cover, as well as corrective exercise, activations, you know, rehab work, prehab work, whatever you wanna call it. So let's dive into how you can start using resistance bands right now. So we're first gonna talk about how to add resistance bands to exercises you're currently doing either at home or at the gym and how to complement the resistance profiles of these exercises to really stimulate the muscle way more than if you're doing the exercise without bands. The curl is the single best example I could give you. So I'm using my old school one inch Swiss bar, which unfortunately not a lot of commercial gyms have these days. Fantastic, fantastic bar to use. 
So when I'm doing a traditional curl, I'm gonna go to the side to emphasize this. The resistance that my bicep, or in this case, brachioradialis, brachialis is having to overcome is really dependent on gravity and the angle or the location of the weight versus the fulcrum. So my elbow is the fulcrum. So as I come up, when my elbow is at 90 degrees, my arms are having to overcome the most amount of resistance in this exercise. So this is a great mid-range exercise. However, as I go to the top and the weight is now getting closer to my elbow to where if you, if you bring your elbows really far forward, the weight's directly over the elbow, there is zero resistance my elbow's having to do because it's just perfectly stacked. So one, please quit doing your curls like that. And two, think about it. As I come up here, the weight is as far away from my elbow as possible. It gets closer, 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 closer. If I end here, there's not as much resistance on my arm as if I'm down here. And now I'm in the shortened position and weak or lagging body parts are weakest in their shortened position. So how can we remedy this to that gravity is only, you know, not emphasizing the mid range, but the entire range of motion, you simply add a resistance band. So now resistance band is attached. I'm just using the two handles, put it on the end of the bars. I'm standing on the resistance band. Okay, my feet are spread apart about shoulder width. Now, as I curl up, right about here, the resistance band starts to kick in. Resistance band really kicks in as gravity diminishes. So by adding the resistance band to the resistance curve of gravity, I have more tension up here than without it. So now the whole range of motion is really being challenged. Now, of course, with a curl, there's less you know, resistance in the bottom position, but your muscles most lengthened. So we get a good stretch in there, come up, gravity wins. Now resistance band starts to take over. So adding resistance bands to curls or exercises in general where gravity leaves a lot to be desired with the resistance curve is the best way to add resistance bands to your current workout training. Another example of how you can add resistance bands to just a free weight exercise is the dumbbell lap pullover. Same principle, at the end position, there's not a lot of tension or resistance that my lats are having to overcome. So simply adding a band is really gonna increase that. So with the dumbbell pullover, right, I get a good stretch, lats are taking over. To end it for a lat focus, you end way down here, but there's not a heck of a lot of gravity, I mean, or tension, I should say, really on my lats, but the band is gonna add that to it. So as gravity starts to lessen, let the resistance band take over. So this is another fantastic way to use bands to increase the resistance profile. Of course, you could do a cable pullover, but really adding this resistance band to the deadbell takes it from a mediocre exercise as far as maximum tension to a significantly better one. Okay, Marv, we get it. Add resistance bands to every exercise is just gonna make it better. No, that is not what I'm saying. First and foremost, I don't think you should add resistance bands to every exercise, regardless if it makes sense and it works or not. I would save that to one, maybe two exercises per session. And secondly, not every exercise lends itself well to increasing resistance via bands. The perfect example is a dumbbell lateral raise. Now on the surface, dumbbells, gravities, free weight gravity, you've been talking about this over and over again in the first two examples. Well, this is when the resistance profiles actually mimic each other to where gravity and resistance bands are peaking at the same time, which is not a good combination. So what I mean is when I'm doing a dumbbell lateral raise, think about it. It's easy here. We can hang out here all day. It's harder up in this top position. So if I'm gonna add a resistance band, that's gonna make it harder in the top position while gravity's already making it harder in the top position, that is an absolute no-go. Don't believe me? Let's see if I can do a couple reps using just one added resistance band. Okay, so I have a single 30 pound resistance band added to my 25 pound laterals. 25 pound laterals pretty much is, you know, middle of my warm up session for this exercise if I'm gonna max it out, but let's see how we do it if we add them together. Nope, that's about as far as I can get, which is gonna lend itself to a lot of cheating and most people already cheat too much you know using their legs jumping up using their traps not really using that side deltoid that we really 
on an isolate. Now, don't think you always have to use the resistance band and attach it to whatever free weight or machine you're doing. Sometimes you can attach it to your body and then still use a free weight or a machine. Now, a banded RDL, fantastic exercise that shows you just what I'm talking about. This is one that I learned too late in my training career, unfortunately, which I would have learned it earlier. I'd already pretty much specialized in fixing droopy booties, but adding this exercise made that process even better. And it's also a great way to keep it, teach a hip hinge to all you corrective exercise folks, you know, PTs, chiros, athletic trainers, whatever, hopefully you already know this, but if you did it, great way to teach a hip hinge. So what essentially we're gonna do is we're gonna walk out, grab the weights, and I'm just gonna perform an RDL. But what's happening is one, if the resistance bands are pulling my hips back to make sure my hips are going back far enough. A lot of people in the hip hinge, they don't go far enough, they round their low back. That's how a lot of people pick shit up. I wonder why your back's jacked up. Okay, so it pulls the hips back, but also more importantly, remember, the resistance profile, the glutes aren't really getting a lot of work if we're standing straight up and down. However, because the resistance band's pulling me back, my glutes are having to have me fire forward. It's a great way to get some extra glute activation. And I had a lot of my women, when I finally started introducing this to training, say, holy cow, I could really feel my butt firing. This is not only for women though. Guys, glute amnesia is a real thing. If you sit down for 20 minutes, Various parts of your glutes pretty much kind of forget to fire, they're a little bit lagging. And low back pain, a lot of time, if it's not like an actual structural issue, but more mechanical, is due from weak glutes, weak abs. So strengthening those glutes, connecting to them, is a fantastic thing to do. Low back strength is crucial these days. Well, it's crucial all days. But, you know, because we're sitting down all the time, not really getting a lot of exercise, you know, that posterior chain, for the most part, does not get a lot of, you know, activation in day-to-day -day living. Now, focusing too much on it when you're working out can cause an issue. But, you know, if you respect the facts that it doesn't get a lot of work throughout the day and you program intelligently, adding things like a banded extension goes a far, far away for strengthening it. So let me show you what I mean. So here, I'm adding resistance safely to a great exercise. Now, I would never recommend somebody jumping straight into this without first mastering the isometric and various ways to progress there. But adding that resistance band has just enough to really add to that resistance curve. And this is actually complementing it. So yes, this is getting more resistance in the top. I'm safely adding more. And I found a lot of people when they add weight, you know, having that same weight through the whole range of motion might aggravate that back. Using a resistance band to increase it only at the top seems not to do so as much. You can do the same thing with machines, adding resistance bands to just complement the resistance profile. The leg press, a fantastic example, but a few notes of caution. First and foremost, Say you're gonna anchor a leg press on, this is a linear leg press, it's not that angled leg press where you add on weights, but it relies on a weight stack. If you have to put it around the platform like this, resistance bands don't like sharp edges, so make sure you cushion that at all times just using simple towels, as well as I'm not a huge fan of adding uh, bands this way to a leg press unless there are safeties, because the bands can essentially bury you because as you fatigue, Right, the last thing you want is your leg, you to get stuck in this position with no safety on the leg press and the bands are simply too much for your legs to overcome. So only do it on a linear leg press like this where I can just end here and I'm safe or one of those, you know, angled leg presses that are traditionally seen in commercial gyms that have safeties in them. If not, I would not recommend using bands at all but hear how it's gonna work. So in this position, the bands are really making this exercise harder. Think about it, where do you rest at a leg press? You don't rest down here, you rest up here. So the exercise actually gets easier as your legs straighten out. There's less resistance to overcome. It's due to muscle stretching and all that other good stuff. You know, the, sh the fibers are shortening. So to increase the resistance and make the leg press harder, more challenging through a larger range of motion, adding bands where they're not much here, let the weight do the work and the fact that you're stretching, that the bands take over as it naturally gets easier, really ensures that your quads, your glutes, 
your adductors, all that good stuff is working harder through the entire range of motion. So far, we've only talked about using resistance bands to make exercises harder. What about making them easier? There's a couple options, whether it be reverse banding like we'll cover next, or using the band to help reduce some of the body weight that you're having to overcome, bands are a great tool. So we've shown this tip multiple times on this channel before, but let me do it again. You could do reverse banding for a dip or a pull up to help you master that body weight exercise. So here you'll have the pull up station, whatever you're gonna use, and you can do this to your you know, doorway pull up bars or at the gym, whatever you wanna do. And essentially we're using the band to unload some of our own body weight and generate some momentum up. Now, what we want to do is pretty much put our foot in here, press our legs straight down so our legs are straight the entire time and carefully go up and down. If you have a bent knee, sometimes that band can slip off your foot. If it goes, you know, off the toe end of your foot, snap city in the face. If it goes off the back end of your foot and you happen to be male, where's that gonna go? Not gonna feel good. It's normal to feel good for the lady, so regardless of who you are, we don't want Snap City down there. So when we're gonna come up and do the resistance band, when I train folks, their first inclination is to grab really low. That's actually not ideal. You wanna grab higher up on the resistance band, pull it down as far as you can. Now you still have some give. Hopefully you can see that, see how it's loose down there? Where I can step my foot in, step all the way down, go to whatever handles you're gonna use, legs are straight, and that's gonna help pull me up. So right here, this is the hardest position when we're stretched, easier. So it helps generate some momentum and offload your body weight. Like the pull-up, you can reverse band a bunch of exercise. The bench press is a great example for a free weight. You could also reverse band, you know, hack squats, leg presses, stuff like that. I obviously do not have that equipment here in one rep layer in my private personal gym. But if you're at a you know a big box gym, reverse banding is great, especially if you have some knee issues. Um, you know it takes some of that strain off of the tendons in your knees. You know the main tendons in your knees, and you're in that bottom position of a hack squat or a leg press. So if you have knee issues and especially aggravated by those exercises, engineering bands to reverse band them really makes a big deal. Now when I use my bands to reverse band in a corporate gym, um, I have to get a carabiner thing. It's not a huge expense, but it is another one with the bands that were sent to me that I'm still testing out, but so far so good. You can just attach them like that. So the whole principle, just like the pull-up, is it allows you essentially to lift more weight without the band because as I come down in this bottom stretch position, I am weakest here when I'm stretched. When do you fail at a bench press? It's not at the top for the most part, when you're in the bottom, that's when your spotter has to take over. So it takes some of the tension off, but as I get stronger naturally, as I go up, less stretch, and I feel more weight. So down here at the bottom, so I have it loaded up, I could maybe, you know, I could have, let's just say 225 on the bar for, you know, case. But, you know, 225 is too heavy for me down here, but I could easily lift, you know, 180 to 200 for reps, but the 225 for some reason is just too heavy for me. That's down to that weight that I can master, and then it overloads my pec at the top, where that 225 is an actual progression in the exercise. Enough already, we get it. Add resistance bands to either increase tension or remove tension. Okay, I think I've kind of beat that to death. But let's talk about where a starter kit like this Good Holo starter kit really shines with standalone workouts, because I don't know about you, you know, in San Diego where I'm currently at, gyms are open again. Back where my school is, back up in Santa Clara, they're still closed. So resistance bands, especially during this quarantine, got a heck of a lot more use probably than ever before. Now when you're doing it at home, of course, you're gonna be using like your door anchor, you know, your ankle straps, things like that. I don't really know how much I really need to go into depth about, you know, creating a routine. Um, if you have any questions about it, I have had a few old blog articles from the old website that's now defunct since I went back to school full time to focus on that. But I can send you that if you want to get an idea. And again, I think this starter kit is great because you go from 30 pounds to 150 pounds. Now, I've only been using it for a year. Like I said, I had issues with, you know, these type of band constructions snapping on me in the past 
over time. I'm not guaranteeing that not to happen, but I was really happy when I got my shipment that it did say right on the box to your warranty. So that is a positive sign. Typically the biggest complaint when it comes to like standalone banded workouts is well, leg training. You know, it's hard to get enough resistance to really train the legs. And yes, that is true. You simply can't compete with using bands to, you know, a 315 pound back squat. However, if you get creative though, you can still make it challenging as hell. And then, you know, do a different goal. Instead of just pure strength, let's work on, you know, high repetitions, feel the burn for lack of a better word, you know, get used to, you know, clearing lactic acid better, get the high repetitions, you know, high end endurance. But again, get creative and you can make leg training somewhat challenging. So this would be probably a banded hack squat almost. So I'd have the foam roller behind me, you know, knees are maximally flexed. You can even elevate your heels to make it more quad dominant and just do an exercise like this. So you have to get creative with bands when it comes to leg training, absolutely. But you can make them more challenging than you would think. I will say though, when you choke up on bands that are made this way, right? When your, your foot or the anchor's really close to the handle attachment point, that's when you need to be cautious because that's when that handle attachment can pull out and snap. However, if that happens with this type of exercise, it might get your lower leg. The odds are it's not gonna snap on you and hit your body. But like I said, so far, I'm using these bands for a week. And no issue. Where I think bands really shine is in addition to whatever workout routine you're doing. Now I've been preaching this for years. Before they became popular, known by a different term, I called them recovery sessions. And I recommended either bands, super lightweight, or body weight. Now, guys at Mind Home came along and they called them trigger sessions. So I'll call them recovery slash pump slash trigger sessions, whatever the heck you want to call them. Um, but essentially what it's doing is on your days away from heavy lifting, one to three times a day, you're using bands or body weight to essentially do, you know, one set high repetition, either per body part, if you really want to go hardcore or just general basic movement to get some blood in there. Getting blood in there the day after hard training is only going to enhance recovery. Not only that, it's getting some activity in, you know, especially with this whole lockdown nonsense, how, you know, stationary and sedentary has everybody been? You have to physically work to be active. I love this, you know, as a student, if I start to get brain fog or I start to gloss over and I'm tired and I need to get some heart pumping, heart pumping, <laughs> I need to get my heart pumping to get some blood pumping, you know, yes, I could do just air squats. I could do jumping jacks. I could do push ups. But I could also walk into the campus gym, grab my set of resistance bands and do a session. So we've talked about this probably since 2017, I think was the first time I mentioned on Instagram, but I've been using it with clients way back to 2015. And yes, these have handles, but you don't have to use them. So the idea is, you know, if you want to do a full extended one, you do, you know, for each body part, do an exercise. So you would do, you know, a face pull or a bent over, you know, bent over rear lateral raise for your rear delt. You could do lateral raises, overhead presses, chest presses, rows, pull downs, lunges. You know, lunges are probably, actually no, lunges are superior to air squats in terms of, you know, getting that unilateral movement. But if you're short on time, air squats work. Then you could do curls and then you could do, you know, press downs, and I'm not having to always use the handles. So you can just grip them as well, which gets a little extra grip strength activation. If you're pressed for time, this is what I'm doing with my clients now who work a heck of a lot, is essentially, look, you're gonna air squat, you are going to chest press, and you're gonna row. Because guess what? Your arms are getting worked during the press and the row, and then your whole body's getting pressed, I mean worked when you're doing the air squats, okay? Now, the reason is why you can do this so high frequency is I think is, think about it. Tension increases as I'm going through the concentric or the positive portion of the rep. Tension decreases, right, as I go through the eccentric. Now, it's been thought for many years that eccentric loading, the eccentric portion where you're lengthening the muscles where all the tissue damage happens. There's some papers studying rats as of late saying that might not be the case, but let's wait until human studies come out. I'm just gonna stick with the whole, you know, What's been accepted for years is the eccentric, the lowering portion of the rep causes all the tissue damage. So because the bands act differently, 
that's going to spare tissue damage and spare your ligaments and tendons and soft tissue. So that's why these are also a great tool for corrective exercise. And that's why you can do it multiple times a day. So here's some other ideas. Say, okay, just because I'm set up for triceps, your triceps, you want better triceps. Okay. Just do, you know, one to three, maybe four times a day. See how your elbows respond, but typically I don't have any people have any, you know, elbow issues, so long as they're properly performing this and using resistance bands, get some extra work. You could use bands simply to warm up. So activations, right? They have a hard time connecting to a muscle. I like resistance bands because you can set them up real quickly. You don't have to wait for a cable machine at the gym and get going. So I've always talked about chest is my lagging body part. I could never connect to it. So what I would do is the chest activation we've talked about for years is arms are extended. Boom, I rotate over, should have set up the band better, and I'm going to try and keep the, oh, with bands. Notice how they're on my shoulders right now. I'm taking tension off the working muscle, so try to avoid that. So what you could do is either before or in between sets, do an activation where you're using the bands to maximally shorten that muscle and squeeze till you get a cramp. I'm going to show you two other ways to use bands to essentially prime or activate your body for workout. Huge game changer for all my pressers out there who have a hard time, you know, keeping the shoulders exactly where they want. They have shoulder pain, bad posture, who doesn't these days? You know, do you ban a set of band pull-aparts right before every set of bench or dumbbell press or whatever you're doing, right? That's activating those muscles in the back and getting them nice and packed and you might even find yourself a little bit stronger because now you're gonna have better tension in your back allowing you to press more weight. Again, that's goal specific, but just for general population, don't think it's a bad idea to do this before every set of pressing, whether it be overhead for your shoulders or for your chest. And last but not least, sometimes using resistance bands prior to other movements is exactly what your future doctor ordered. Anyways, so, you know, without going too much off on a tangent with my soapbox, if an exercise hurts you, stop doing it. You don't have to do an exercise because somebody said it's the end all be all. Shape exercise to fit your body. However, sometimes programming intelligently can allow exercises that might cause you some discomfort to no longer cause discomfort. The best example is some knee pain when you do a squat pattern, whether it be leg press, back squat, hack squat, whatever, Bulgarian split squat, lunges, stuff like that. What I have found is doing some hamstring work before, you know, my heavy squat pattern, whether, you know, again, one leg or two leg, can go up far away with reducing knee pain. I had three surgeries on this knee before I was in the eighth grade. So knees, among many other surgeries, unfortunately, but knees are a liability for me. So simply doing a couple sets of banded leg curls before I back squat or front squat or zercher squat or split squat, you get the point, goes a long way with reducing knee discomfort. And yes, you could add all five bands and make this a hell of an exercise because what am I doing? Hamstrings having to really contract, especially this lower one third part at the knee and in the shortened position. And if you've never really felt your hamstrings work a lot in a leg curl, I guarantee you will, especially seated, because it really emphasizes the contraction in addition to the bands. So here's just yet another way we can program smartly and use bands to our advantage. And then in addition, I kind of mentioned it, but to avoid this turning to an hour long IGTV session and probably I'll just throw it up on the, old, the YouTube, that's really for clients only, um, corrective exercise, love bands for corrective exercise. You know, when people have that upper cross syndrome, which I'm gonna be honest, I am developing a little bit due to my workload with school. Um, I love doing that. Coming back from soft inj tissue injuries, like I've already talked about, it's less stress on the connective tissue um, and on the muscle. So bands are great for corrective exercise. Blood flow restriction, bands are great for. Uh, huge fan of blood flow restriction, I've been talking about for years as well. When Dr. Jeremy Lanky's research first came out. As always though, the caveat, because one rep at a time was geared solely on fitness for people and addiction recovery in the beginning, now I'm kind of broadened out. 
Uh, if you're a former IV drug user, don't do blood, restri blood restriction. It makes no sense to start putting a tourniquet to your, to your limbs. That's gonna be a trigger. But I love resistance bands for a super quick blood flow restriction session. Similar, similar, similarly. No. Similar, similarly. Okay, let's try it again. Similarly to, let's try this one last time. Similarly to corrective exercise, you know, bands have huge, you know, potential for hardcore athletic performance improvement. Now, obviously, you know, using resistance bands to add progressive resistance has been in, you know, powerlifting circles since Louis Simmons brought it to that, you know, market or niche, whatever you want to call it. But like hardcore athletic performance, resistance bands, because they're increasing tension at the end range of motion when the muscle is shortened, does a great deal for adding stability when we need it, you know, training the fascial system, which is way beyond the scope of a quick tutorial, you know, used for speed and agility training. Um, I used resistance bands for that with folks when that was, you know, they're performance driven, but way beyond the scope for that. But just know that resistance bands are more than just, I want to work out to get my heart pumping to maybe build a little bit of muscle. There is major connotations for like top level athletic performance. So there you have a family, pretty much an ultimate guide of how to use bands. Now again, I freaking love bands, you know, take them with you on vacation, they fit in your suitcase. Use them to make exercises harder and therefore better. Use it to make exercises easier to allow you to do them without discomfort or just do them and get better at them overall. Do them as recovery sessions, do them as pump sessions, do them to build up lagging body parts, do them for corrective exercise, do them for activations, do them as standalone because your damn gym is still closed. You know, bands, big fan of them. Now, again, the whole, you know, this whole tutorial, I've been using the set Good Holo sent to me from folks here on Amazon. So uh, that's if you wanna check out that starter kit set. I have been using it for a week. None of them are broken on me. Um, none of them even show any signs of wear and tear. I can't vouch for long-term use, but I have been extremely impressed by them thus far. Otherwise, I use the company Rubber Bandits for my looped ones. Um, never had an issue with them breaking before. If you have any questions, just reach out to me. Um, I am on break right now, so if you want to set up a consult or, you know, whatever, get some routines or new help with nutrition, reach out. Otherwise, if you like this video, obviously like, um, tag some people below, share it, and if you have any other questions or any other videos you want us to cover, let me know.